it is gratifying being with you, with all of you tonight, gathered in Boston, a city with a long history of partnership, friendship, and collaboration with Rwanda in our journey to self-reliance, urgency, and restoration of our dignity, joining hands in the efforts aiming to strengthen our nation. Esteemed team, hearts, and partners, you've understood the principle behind our nation's dedication to seeing our communities living dignified lives in the best economic and health conditions. You came, you saw, and acted. Having some role in, even a small role, in saving the life of a young Rwandan whose future is now bright uh, is in another category altogether. Um, so I know that team heart is the best thing I do. So I hope it becomes the best thing you do. By the end of this evening, all of us here in this room would have gotten a chance and an opportunity to really do something much bigger. And I should say, playing a role that is even crucial in helping to place Rwanda on a true path to sustainability. It takes all of us, the community, to do this together. The names and the stories of the Team Heart Rwandan patients now surpass 130. And as Team Heart volunteers, we are continuously amazed by the Rwandan patients' unwavering faith and trust in our provision of care. What is even more so incredible is how these Rwandan patients always exhibit a desire to live. But also, I think these Rwandan patients exhibit a strength and fortitude that is unmatched and always shine their never-ending smiles in spite of their debilitating illness and always and often brush with death. At age five, Ernest recalls having a very painful sore throat. So painful, he could not even swallow. This was after the genocide, and there was an acute shortage of physicians in the country. His parents tried to find the care for Ernest that he needed. As the symptoms of heart failure appeared, which is how rheumatic heart disease usually presents. Ernest pushed on and he became an excellent student in primary school. By his early teens, he was forced to quit playing soccer and he could no longer help his mother carry water. His family insisted that he see medical care and uh, find a physician. A local businessman overheard his father pleading for an appointment with one of the only four cardiologists in the country and helped him arrange a private appointment with a physician in town. It was there that Ernest first heard the word that rheumatic heart disease and this will destroy your heart valves and could end your life. He was only 15 years of age. He also was told that there was a team coming from the United States and they might be able to evaluate him to determine if help could be given. He was a wafer thin young man from Rwanda, a young man from Rwanda. He won our hearts and he was too sick to have surgery that year in Rwanda and we brought him home to Boston. Ernest received two heart valves and proceeded to make a remarkable recovery. He went on to graduate from high school, excelling, doing extremely well in chemistry, and is currently a third year medical student at the University of Rwanda. He has truly become the face of Team Heart. My name is Ernest Simunga, and I am a, a lucky guy. Uh, please join me to thank all the people who made it possible for me to be here now. Now, these stories you hear tonight happened because of the volunteers of Team Heart. 
and I would like to ask them all to stand so we might appreciate their work and their people. especially Sia, um, it means a lot for me. Um, as Parfait mentioned, I was also diagnosed um, a VSD, basically a type of congenital heart disease. And this cardiac care center is very dear to my heart because although I had the luck to receive an operation and be here with you tonight, I know that thousands of children still need it. And this would basically give them a second chance in life which is something they wouldn't have without that cardiac care center. Thank you very much. While your commitment and dedication to the people of Rwanda and around the world, we strive to help, we would like to recognize you, Your Excellency Madam Jeanette Kagame, as the outstanding humanitarian that you are. Every day you live the philosophy of improving the life of vulnerable people by giving them help and the tools to do what is needed to be a vibrant part of society. We celebrate you for this role and thank you very much for being here with us tonight. I'll be with this kickoff. Congratulations.